Folks, uh, this is Hector Agostini again. I wanted to expand on a few points I've covered in Chapter 13 with respect to motivation. As you know, I'm very big on motivation. And this is for my business management students, BUS 110 at Middlesex Community College. So let's go on over to page 294. And we talked about motivation, which is basically, as they point out there, the valence of something. Valence is nothing more than the value, how much a person value a person gives to a particular reward, or whether it be intrinsic or extrinsic, as we talked about. And you multiply that times the expectancy, that is the expectancy of getting something done, and the instrumentality of the item. So let's go on over to page 294, and that's basically the expectancy model as they point out with respect to motivation. And if you go over to page 295, they also go into more detail as to the expectancy, motivation basically of the individual to do the work. And again, it's, it really boils down to what I have here. Again, the expectancy times the instrumentality, that is how you're gonna do it. Valence, the value of something. And this leads to effort, effort leads to performance, that leads to some sort of a reward. And that, again, is your motivation model. Now, taking it one step further, how can you judge a bunch of people that are working for you? Well, in the expectancy theory, you have to get people to believe that their effort leads to some sort of performance. If they don't believe that, it's going to be almost impossible to get someone to be motivated to do work. On top of that, the performance has to lead to some sort of outcome, a reward of some kind. Now, effort leads to performance, performance times performance leading to outcome. That will give us what we call the, the effort index. I've got three people, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Who's the person I should give this particular task to? Who is motivated enough to do this particular work? Well, if I do numbers, let's say Peter believes that 90% of the time his work leads to performance, that is his effort but he believes that the performance leads to, the out, to an outcome or reward of some kind only 50% of the time. Paul believes that his performance is only 30% based upon his effort, but he does believe that performance leads to outcome. Okay? And then we have Mary who believes that 90% of the time her effort will lead to good performance and that 90% of the time, that performance will lead to some sort of outcome. So which of the three people should I give a particular task to where there's a specific reward? Now, Peter, 90% effort to performance, 50% performance to outcome, that's a 45% effort index. Paul, 30% of the time effort leads to performance, 100% of the time believes that performance leads to an outcome, 30% effort index. Mary, 90% of the time believes that her effort leads to performance, and 90% of the time believes that performance leads to an outcome. She's got an 81% effort index. How can I get these up? Well, Paul was at 30% effort leads to performance. Get him to realize that his performance is totally dependent upon, to a large extent, his effort. If we can get him to believe that's higher, let's say up to 100%, he would be at 100% effort index. So when you look at people, yeah, you, you're not going to sit down and do the doodling, the numbers, but you have to get them to believe that their effort leads to performance. You have to believe that performance leads to a reward or an outcome for them. And if you can get these raised, the amount of effort, the effort index that each one will put in will be much higher. Again, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't get into more detail on, on, on mine, but hopefully this will explain it to you a little bit better. Okay, thanks again.